Okay guys, g'day. Uh, here, this, here's a quick video to show you how to create uh, the graph, uh, complete the table and the graph that you need uh, for the sack on Friday. Just in case you're not too sure how to use Excel, this is going to be the best, best way you can do it. Um, so here we go. Alright, first thing you need to do, this is just data that I've created, very very similar to what we've got in class but different, I don't want to give you exact numbers so you still have to do some work yourself. Um, first what we want to do is just look at the graph and down the left hand side here in this column we've got our enzyme concentrations and then I've got three trials for each one remember we've done three trials to uh, increase the reliability of our experiment so we're going to take the average of those and then what we're going to do is convert those to inverse time which is a better indication of the rate of the reaction not just raw time values so in Excel to convert these three values to an average I'm just going to use a formula you could do it by hand or using a calculator but I'm just going to put it into Excel because it's a bit easier um, all we do is use the formula equals average and then brackets and I'm going to click on one first cell C2 and drag it across to C, uh, E2 sorry those are the cells I want to combine and get an average from my second bracket in enter and then we've got our average to two decimal places which is perfect all I'm going to do now to complete the averages for all the other concentrations is click on the right bottom corner of the cell little plus there and drag it right down and I have created the average times in about 20 seconds for all of our concentrations. Next I'm going to use another formula in this cell here to work out the inverse time and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go uh, equals the value of the cell sorry no I'm not I'm going to go equals 1 divided by the value of the cell sorry oh that's what I forgot to put brackets in okay let's try it again this is not not liking me equals 1 equals 1 divided by this cell make sure you get the brackets in the right place there we go that's better so the formula is given up here okay 1 over the time so in this instance the cell F2 contains our time and that's how we work out inverse time so 1 over F2 and again just drag that formula right down there and this gives us here a value which is now a rate it's not the actual time but it's a, a measure of the rate at which an experiment uh, which our reaction happened now that I've got this data I want to create a graph of enzyme concentration versus rate of reaction because that's what we're interested in looking at so I'm going to select uh, these cells here and also going to oh sorry I'm going to select these cells here and also try that uh oh uh oh still getting used to using this Right, that's these cells and these cells. Right, so I've selected the two cells I'm interested in, enzyme concentration and rate of reaction. Uh, and I'm going to go up to insert and I want to do a line graph. So we're looking for a relationship. Don't want any of those ones, all chart types. You've got Excel on your laptop so you'll be able to do this. Scroll down to XY scatter and I'm going to put the second one in here. Scatter with smooth line and markers bang oh okay selected it there we go so here what we've got is a rough graph a pretty good graph actually showing our results and there's a few things wrong with it 120% okay we didn't do that so we're going to go ahead and fix a few things not much well there's a trend in our line but it's not exactly what we want so I'm just going to show you a few tricks to to try and fix that so the first thing we're going to do is go up to we want to make this a nice straight line Okay, just to show that there is a clear relationship between enzyme concentration and rate of reaction. So we're going to go, we're going to click on our graph and under layout, okay, we get a whole lot of options here. And the one thing we're going to do is start by clicking on trend line, then going down to linear trend line. And this just uh, applies a line of best fit. And you can see here in the legend, it's our, uh, our line of best fit for the rate of reaction is given uh, as this thin black line going up there. Okay, um, what I also want to do is change the values down the bottom. So if I double click on, or if I click on these, somehow I can click on them. There we go. If you double click on the axis down the bottom, I want to change that maximum number that that can be to 100. So I'm going to fix it at uh, 100. Or actually, it should, yeah, 100 is great. Oh, hold on, let's try this because it might not work. Yeah, no, that's not right. Okay, so we'll try that again. should be 1.0 that's better ok 
Okay, so we've got a concentration 0, 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. We didn't actually do one for 0%. Okay, but you've got 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 there. There's a couple of other things we can do with this graph. All right, again, just using these tabs up the top. Um, if I want to change the layout of the uh, layout, yep, I can add a chart title there. So you should think about what a chart title uh, could be for this. Remember, we're investigating how enzyme concentration affects the rate of reaction. You could also add axis titles, which you should do. Every graph should have X and Y labels. So along the bottom, on the x-axis, we've got our enzyme concentration. Our vertical axis is the inverse time or rate of reaction. Um, if you want to modify the legend there, you can. We can add data labels in, so we can add what the actual uh, inverse times are by selecting them here, and they appear as numbers on the line. All right, and that's basically it. But what you need to have um, when you come to class is a, is a table completed like this using the numbers that I sent you, so the, the actual class numbers, not these ones here. I just made these up. You should have the average time. If you want to work it out using a formula, that's up to you. You're not assessed on that as long as you've got the right numbers. And then you should also have uh, the rate of reaction values here and a graph. And when you uh, have that ready and you bring that to class, we can we can look at the trend in class, discuss the theory behind it, and that will better prepare you for uh, the SAC on Friday. All right, I hope this has helped. Uh, any more questions, bring them to the lunchtime session on Wednesday.